Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Alright, welcome to the video. This is going to be fun. So, I originally had shot this video on Easter. I thought, Simon Bisley, this was the this was the chain of thought. Welcome to the day after hump day, by the way. Um, you know, I was trying to think of something that was Eastery, and I was thinking rabbits. And I remembered Simon Bisley doing like weird rabbits and... I don't know if it was like a Batman's Judge Dread book. It could have been some of the Lobo stuff, but I vaguely remember some kind of creepy rabbits. But I was like, man, where am I going to find that? I don't even remember what comic it is. So, as I was thinking about Bisley, I was like, oh man, he did the Bible. That's perfect for Easter. I got 20 minutes into the video and my freaking um, Photoshop crashed. These files are really like they just chew up a lot of ram i'm not 100 percent sure why they're not really that big i've got 16 gigs of ram in my computer and yet it struggled to shut these files um so i don't know if they're encoded in a weird way or whatever it is but anyway um we'll do our best to look at these we're going to go into full screen mode um and just enjoy some simon bisley art um he started doing these i think geez in like 2000 so this is like a 21 year old project from what I kind of gathered um, is it's sort of an ongoing thing. So whenever he feels uh, like doing a piece, he does one. He works in a lot of different styles. Um, sometimes he kind of seems to do single images that feel a little more sequential. Um, you know, it, it it's kind of covers a lot of different ground. And he does draw very, very well. So, you know, let's just enjoy the ride. Hopefully everyone's doing well. And uh, let's go. All right. No, this is where it was lagging. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, I would like, every time I would shut a file, it would take like 20 seconds for it to like shut it. And it was just not going to be a good video. And I was pressed for time on Easter. Didn't want to edit. And also I wouldn't have been home when it was done editing. So it really just wasn't going to work. This is nice. This is really, really cool. Um, difficult to tell in this actual, uh, I'm assuming this is a painting that's been turned gray. Um, it doesn't look to me like dark paper <coughs> that he worked the lights out of. Could be though, Bisley could definitely do that. But either way, it's it's a pretty cool little uh, piece. And we'll zoom in on some of these other um, images as we move along. But. Simon's great, man. He's so good. I love stuff like this. I think it's so fun looking. Um, and Slain, he did some really interesting, um, just different mixed media, you know. Sometimes it was pencils. Sometimes it looked like watercolor. Sometimes it was probably oil or acrylic. He's quite the mad scientist with things, which is, which is fun to see, you know. Um... I really don't... I'm under the impression that Simon might have gone to a little bit of art school. Um, uh, but I could be wrong on that. But I vaguely, vaguely remember him saying something about maybe going to art college. And, um, you know, a lot of people have negative experiences at art colleges. Some have positive experiences. I think ultimately, if you do go for a year or two, you will actually be a better artist. Now, what kind of luggage that takes you... Um, you carry out of it. That's that's kind of uh, each person's personality. Bisley seemed like a pretty strong-willed um, young person, and so he probably was more like you know, f authority. You know, I'm going to do what I want, and clearly he did um, along throughout his career. So oh, this is awesome. So there was a point I was debating if I would bring this up or not, um, but uh, was it was something that I noticed. This is this is very very nice. Um, about probably fifteen years or so ago, his art dealer or Simon with his art dealer or whoever was representing him at the time really was trying to make a play to move Simon away from being a comic artist, and I noticed just the the branding was. Not even illustration, he was a fine artist. That's what they kept sort of like putting out there. These are fine art paintings, these are fine art drawings. And um, I caught it right away when, when they started doing it. And I was like, well, are they just trying to get higher prices for this stuff? Like, you know, if you tell a comic book art collector that these they're fine art, now do you like double or triple the price? So I don't know what ultimately ha ha happened with that. I mean, You've heard stories of Frazetta, how Frazetta was not comfortable with being, you know, the comic artist turned 
illustrator turned fine artist and he considered himself a fine artist and look ultimately i mean you can try to direct that conversation but people are going to place you where they place you um busily stuff is so wild um and he's done such a large body of comic work i do kind of think it would be somewhat difficult to completely rebrand himself as is you know a fine artist Fine art is a very, like, it's its own universe. And if you've ever followed any of that stuff, contemporary art or whatever, um, it's quite fickle. <laughs> Some of it's really good, you know. I've seen installations, all kinds of weird stuff that are actually very, very nice. But Bisley doesn't need to worry about it. That's the, the bottom line, is if he does great work and they're painted, they're going to cost more than, um, you know... Uh, pen and ink piece and these pencil illustrations you know might sell like paintings it's hard to say but you know you try to move you know you you try to control the pricing and things like that but ultimately the collectors are gonna sort of go for it or not this is real nice but yeah, I did think that that was interesting that they were trying to sort of shift gears with uh, how they presented the art and how they were labeling it This is really cool. This is character again. Man, Bisley just, just like figure drawing is so damn good. He's the biz. I've never really met him. I've been uh, by tables where he's sitting at, and usually he'll be sketching or talking to other people, and I've never actually engaged him. But, uh, he is a big man <laughs> when he was younger too i mean not that he's like super old now but when he was younger he was like man he looked like one of his characters it was crazy ah this is really good he had a stretch. I have the Art of Simon Bisley book. And man, I'll tell you what. He he had a run of paintings that he did. I've, I've done Bisley before. I'm sure that they're in that. Um, but man, they were so kick-ass. And just, they were exciting. But they were tight enough to be, like, they looked delicately done. But they had the balls of Bisley. It was just this killer, killer combination of anything you would like from Bisley, but this is this is really really nice this is a great great painting man this is an interesting project he took on i mean you know <clears throat> i don't know if he's um read the bible i would assume as he's going through this he has i don't know really the background on this it would be interesting uh, it's almost a shame that really that that hasn't been covered in more depth um in terms of uh, a project for him you know We've got, you know, Bernie Wrightson did the Frankenstein stuff, and that, you know, is very iconic work. And, and uh, you know, when you take on something like the Bible and you're going to do it for 20 years, I mean, it's a, he's taking this really seriously. So, you know, well, there should be more conversations about it. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so so again, you can kind of see that this is almost feels like a tiny bit like a sequence. So some of his single pieces actually do have like you know beats, like like storytelling beats, and some are spaced differently. You know, more like single illustrations. Although maybe if you saw them all in order, um, they are sort of like sequential paintings. It's interesting because that is kind of what I was doing with the black drawings was. Um, I was playing with time and, and storytelling um, in a sequential way, but just handling it instead of doing like, you know, six panels on a page or eight panels on a page, there were single illustrations. But, yeah, that's cool. I would assume that probably most people that are watching this this video haven't seen these pieces. I know that there will definitely be a few that have, but I mean, this is definitely a book that that uh, I would I would highly highly recommend. Interesting. Then he's in a painting. 
the saturation on this could be a little bit off in terms of how hot this painting is reading. You can never tell online, you know, you see something like that. It could be a little bit more like this. It also feels a tiny bit darker than what I would picture maybe Biz would do. He's got a pretty good control of his values. Let me just pull it. I want to see something. Yeah, this is a little bit of a dark. I think I think maybe the, the painting and the piece is a little dark. And then now you could actually play with the saturation a bit more. That looks pretty good to me. It still feels a little, little muddy, but... Sometimes you can't pull a skin out of uh, being dark. It's, cute. it's it's interesting too thinking of that because uh, Frazetta did these pencil drawings um, uh, for Danzig. It's like I actually have the book somewhere. I just kind of came across it. I bought it. Oh, I think it's Illustrations Arcanum. It's called. I'm pretty sure that's right. Sometimes I even surprise myself with my mem my memory. I, I I feel sometimes my hard drive has been filled and. Uh, I need external hard drives for my brain, but uh, then I pull out, like, do a Hail Mary like that. But yeah, I think it's called Unearthed Arcana. No, Unearthed Arcana is a D&D book. Let me see. I want to see if I have it right here. Where is it? I saw it. I'm just looking around my office really quick to see if I can spot it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Hold on. But uh, what Frank was saying with the book was that even though the book printed great and he said that it's, yeah, it's Illustrations Arcanum. Um, even though the book printed great, he felt that, that there was something in the reproductions that lost a little bit of the actual, like, uh, uh, energy and, and sort of life in the drawings and that they seemed to tighten up just the tiniest bit. And so with these Bisley pieces, there could be some of that going on with these where it's like, you know, when you see it as a scan and stuff like that, they're still really, really impressive. But maybe if you saw it in person, it might even blow your mind more. Probably would, in fact. These pieces I always found really interesting where there's like stuff that almost doesn't look fully done. Because I know he would paint this and it would, it would have a very um, kind of translucent application of paint and kind of like diffusion you know as things move back further from the camera you can use less detail and especially in a painting you can really kind of um manipulate that whereas uh if you are penciling and inking a comic book um you know you're you control the line work and you can disintegrate your lines but if a colorist doesn't understand really what you're going for it can get kind of mixed results Bisley knows what he's doing, though. The guy is a f great painter. So, he's legit. This is great, man. I think this stuff is so underappreciated. It's really, really good stuff. Now, like, some people might go, well, it's not as good as Lobo. He's not doing Lobo anymore. He's doing this, so just settle down. <laughs> This is some good shit. When you can draw stuff like this, then you can talk shit. Until then, I would just calm down. <laughs> but this is another example of, <clears throat> in a way, it actually reminds me a little bit of James Jean. If you've ever seen uh, some of James Jean's, uh, you know, like works in progress, this area right here, let me, uh, I think I have red selected, do I, or green? Yeah, this area in here reminds me almost a little bit of like a Fables cover. It really does. It's, man, I I kind of felt like it was interesting because there was a moment when I first got hired at Wildstorm where Bisley was doing stuff kind of through us more than other companies. And I don't know if Scott Doombeer set that up or who did, but, you know, he was doing some painted trading cards. There was a real nice Warblade piece that he did, and he did um, Hell... I can't think of Not Hell Shock. What was it called? The Hell strike i don't know some some villain with like a flaming head and stuff like that and he did some comics for us too he, he seemed to have lost his desire to really do his best best work and was kind of doing more like jobber job uh 
level detail and stuff like that and and um this seems to have reinvigorated him into to actually putting in quite a bit more work so it's nice to see artists when they circle back around like that sometimes you get burned if you work in comics for 20 20 years or so um sometimes you need to like let off the gas pedal for a little bit arthur adams did it in um kind of around the same time in fact um he did some authority, and and there was there was a little period where art stuff I thought lost a little bit of the charm, and then he brought it back around, and he's been killing it now for twenty years, so yeah, I think you turn a corner and you sort of go, I can keep going this route, or I can you know re-engage the gas pedal and try to um, you know get better and better and better and and. Uh, The tricky thing with Bisley stuff too that, that it might be hard to understand for some people if you don't draw a lot is is the delicate balance between quote unquote realism and sort of like a very sort of grotesque exaggerated style. I mean Bisley is really really good at exaggerated and grotesque um, but when you start doing more realistic anatomy and stuff like that then all of a sudden you kind of have to blend it together and so like a good example would be like like this this is very symbolic even though he's drawn quite a bit of detail on it and even this hand to me this reads like more um I'll, like i said when i say grotesque i mean um distorted proportions it's angular it's a very shaped vase drawing but then when he gets to the fighters and stuff like that some of it's a bit more sort of you know he's flexing sort of realism things but it's a very very delicate balance to to one uh get in your stuff and then two to carry it through piece through piece so you know something like this it's like it's cartoony and not realistic but but heading that way this is great man this um stuff here it's really really beautiful bisley you good, man. Hopefully someday I get to meet him and talk to him. It would be fun. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I would have to say other than you're awesome, but uh, it would be fun. Yeah, these paintings shot dark, or somehow they, they feel... This just feels overly dark, and I don't think there's really not a way to um, sort of manipulate the file too much again so do you see what i'm saying like some of this stuff is pretty realistic like like this could be a phil hale painting like that's got really really beautiful value on it and stuff like that and then here you know he gets into his more like i don't know it's got like a little bit of like a gustav klimt or um oh i don't know um who's like a, i don't know if you know the illustrator john bauer or k nielsen kind of thing you know it's like like um sort of fantasy early illustration really good stuff this is nice looks like him young in a way oh, this is interesting <clears throat> there's some biz bizzes oh man it's really cool <laughs> <laughs> the way he carves that anatomy is so awesome. Oh my gosh. Look at this arm right here. Kind of, let's see. Let me, I just, just need to check the clock. I need to do a review after this. Okay, we're okay. Um, I need to do a review after this and then get to work. I got lots to do. This is nice. It's pretty impressive what he's doing with graphite here, to be honest. I don't know if it's graphite or charcoal or whatever it is, but uh, whatever he's using, man, he's actually getting a lot of um, a lot of different stuff going on. And man, it goes dark. You can use up to, God, I don't know, was it like a 9B pencil? I don't know how that would work, but there's at least 5 or 6. Little soft lead. Oops, sorry. is good too really nice gesture on this guy and then these guys talking to each other is really cool this is great too told you this is a good one this is a good video good 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 
what's your fantasy project? You got one brewing where you're like, I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do, what's the Anton LaVey's book? I don't know, Necronomicon. <laughs> Look for stuff that's in public domain. It's a slippery slope, but um, there's, there's interesting stuff in the public domain. So my phone is like beeping. Um, it's Kelsey. He's, he's working on his creator own book, so he's been doing designs. <clears throat> I actually, I laid out 25 pages of Crystal Planet issue 2 uh, yesterday and kind of the day before. Well, it's, I did it all in a day, but they're just thumbnails. They're not like, um, I wouldn't work off of those except to um, get the size relationships down. I mean, uh, I can give you an example of what I mean really fast, but... Uh, you know what I mean? You get you get your panels, you get the position of things, you feel out the perspective. It's more more detailed than this, but um and then what I do is is I'll be able to look at groups of pages and see if there's redundant storytelling or panel layouts and stuff like that. And then what I do, then I start to flesh out the figures. So I'm gonna do the first five pages today, and those I'll be able to work off of. Um I did them traditionally. I literally grab a sheet of paper and or I, I did it on the script in fact and I just do it in the gutters and I just sit there and I read the page and I think about it and I usually will go with my first instincts of laying it out and if something doesn't work then you can kind of work around it sometimes I pick the best panel and see how I would handle that and whatnot so it's an interesting process I'll get into it more it's, you know, I'm still feeling my way through it all, so I don't like to really give lessons on stuff like that because I definitely don't feel that I'm, I'm in any sort of situation to be telling people what to do with it. That's just the way it goes. Like he's sad. Don't be sad, dude. Perspective is kind of wacky on this. This is, like, not as tight as the other drawings, so... And again, this has got that very sort of stylish kind of vibe to it. It reminds me of a couple of different artists. I'm definitely getting like a Klimt vibe. I'm thinking of fine artists. I mean, maybe a little Picasso. Um, then for comics, maybe like Frank Miller. But, I mean, that's all kind of... You know. Some of this reminds me a little bit of Bill Sienkiewicz. Man, that's cool. It's got a little bit of a Frazetta vibe there. I'm going to stop with the comparisons, though, because I, I hate to hear people compare art. So when I do it myself, it's, I'm aware that it's a very, I don't know. To me, it's just, it's underplaying what the artist did, um, you know, and I get, like, the human sort of need to, like, categorize things, but... Unless someone's blatantly doing someone else's style, um, I just let them run with it and kind of do their thing. Bisley's been drawing for a long, long time. I would say he's probably been drawing professionally for 35 years. Could be even a little bit longer. This is nice. Man, that's a really, really good pose. It's huge. I'm always impressed by stuff like this. It's just crazy. It would be so fun to watch him flesh this out more and see like like where he keeps piling on more detail and anatomy and like does he erase the foot and redraw it or does he just draw over it? It would be really, really cool to see. He does have a YouTube channel with some kind of different videos on it. Um, I don't know how frequently he's updated it but there's there was definitely in the last few years he does have a youtube channel where he's like painting like a big skull or something on a wall some stuff so can get a little bit of insight into the guy oh man i would love to have him i would love to do an interview with him oh my gosh it would be so interesting 
he really really does actually draw like anatomy so freaking cool he he really <clears throat> zeroed in on that and uh boy it's nice nice and stylish you know it feels it feels unique to him peeping it all out this is what i've been recommending to people that are like learning to draw um i've actually i'm doing a review right after this um for an inker though but uh you know perspective figure drawing all this stuff you just have to keep coming back to it like like take a little bit of time and try to learn some stuff and then you bring it into your work and then you work on that for a while and you keep kind of revisiting the things that you sort of were trying to refine like maybe you you get confused on back muscles and you're not sure how the, the deltoids and the chest and the bicep tucks under here and these back muscles attached to the arm bones and all this um you know you you know it, you'll you'll learn it and then you kind of it, it sort of sometimes it fades a little bit and this is great um you, you just keep returning to it. it's like perspective i don't i don't really fully believe that you can go through a perspective book and kind of walk out of it sort of ready to tackle any perspective problems it's kind of like you you learn as much as you can you start to apply it and you get confused <laughs> you forget some things but you have some successes along the way too and uh, you just kind of keep building and you know over a period of like three to five years it kind of it sort of fixes itself oh, this is really really cool god i would love to see this one painted fuck man dude seriously if he went through and painted these best pieces and did it really like busily on like 10 Fuck, man, he would have such a renaissance, like a fandom. He just, he feels very quiet right now. Like, I'm not hearing about him enough, you know? These are really, really killer pieces. And, man, painted, painted, like, when he's really into it. God damn, that'd be great. This is interesting. This almost <laughs> reminds me of something from uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark with the, like, I don't know. I'm sure it's maybe an Egyptian thing or something. I don't know. The costuming is quite nice, too. It's very easy to take for granted. Um, uh, the different, you know, helmets and things that he's drawing is just like, oh, Bisley just is sort of doing it. But, you know, he probably had to do a decent amount of research for some of this stuff. And uh, sometimes that can be, you know, we don't appreciate that idea that that, that was all work for him, you know. We just see cool wings on a, you know, winged person and go, oh, you want, like, well, something like this, you know. Bisley's drawn this kind of thing quite a few times that maybe he doesn't need reference for it. But, you know, the things that he doesn't know how to draw, then he would, you know, especially if it's historical. So, it's a lot of work involved in this stuff, you know. it's I've said I, I was surprised at, at how tremendously expansive the responsibilities of a penciler are and, it's, and if you're inking yourself then you even have a little bit more but uh just the organizational skills that a really effective penciler needs are, are quite high they really are because you're not only just expected to draw well but man you have to keep track of a lot of shit this is cool so we should be wrapping this up and then I got to go do my review and then I got to get to work. But this is this is some good morning vitamins, vitamins. Simon paint these. Paint them all. It's <laughs> cool. This looks like a second scan of the same piece, but I was I didn't look at it too closely so I could be wrong. Maybe it's just a different version of it. This is cool. You know, maybe I'm getting a little bit of an Egon Shiley vibe too. It's like Clinton Shiley a little bit to me at times. Just, but it, you know, it just could be quinky dink. I don't know. This is nice. Put a little airbrush in here. This is very, man, very three dimensional. It's crazy. I'm wondering. Um, almost looks like 
maybe if black was dropped in digitally. I don't know. It, it looks good, though. Like, I mean, he could easily go in and do it on his own. But this is airbrush, so I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Um, it could just be the um, stencil on it. Ah, oh, it's cool. And if you like Simon Bisley, man, I would recommend Jim Murray. You could check out Batman Demon, or uh, he did some Batman Judge Dredd stuff. If you just Google Jim Murray, um, he's an English comic artist, and uh, just concept art. He did uh, Low Town, too, is another book that he did. Really, really good, but seems to can't come from the same school as Bisley, we'll say. <laughs> He's, he's, he is really good. God, this is great. <laughs> There's a guy online that has a pretty huge Simon Bisley collection. It might actually be on YouTube. I feel like I've maybe seen video of, of this collection. It's him sort of like sitting in his living room going through like pieces. Pretty fun. This is really, really neat. Man, his... He did painted covers for some Vertigo book. It's escaping me now. Maybe Doom Patrol. They're good. They're really good. Oh, it's nice too. All right, I'm gonna get out of full screen mode and see what we got here. How many more? Uh, we're, we're right at the end. So okay, this will work. I can I can do this. My goal was to be working on my stuff by. 11 i'm gonna be a little bit off but it's not too bad I'm telling you man i run a tight ship it's no joke this is this is what you have to do this is all the distractions this is twitter this is instagram this is checking your phone to see if you've got text messages this is your your brother calling you because he wants to catch up <laughs> you're the boat and you just have to leave it all behind <laughs> Like, wait, Rich, come back. You're like, I I'm off to do things. <laughs> I honestly don't know how people can do social media every day. Like, especially, like, bicker on, on things like Twitter and, and actually be productive. But some people clearly can. But it would be too distracting to me. <sighs> I'm a simple man. This is a little, like, um... <clears throat> there's a... I can't think of the piece, but it's, um, well, there's, it's been done many times. It's, uh, what's his name? Gustav Dorr. Muka did some stuff like this, too. And Frazetta kind of sort of touched on the tumbling nude bodies and sort of pleasure and pain. Very, very erotic. No. <laughs> All right, that's it. We'll end on this one. This is such a great piece. Oh my gosh. You know, honestly, it's funny because like like seeing this piece and this this um, level of finish, you know, he, he obviously someone like Bisley could take this much further. But but I'll tell you what, to like just go like, all right, now I'm gonna paint this. Oh my god, I would be so nervous. I'm not a painter though either, but um. Uh, gosh, I would just be so scared that I would just completely lose it like 12 hours after this, you know? <coughs> <coughs> you start painting it and everything's going good until like you get to a point where you're like, I don't know how to go further with this and I don't know how to get back. But that's why he's the biz. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great day. That was fun. There was some really, really good art in there. And I, I love uh, revisiting Simon Busy with you all. So thank you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. We actually, we've gotten quite a few over the last like week or so. Um, and um, you can check out my Patreon if you're actually interested in learning to draw. I have over 700 videos, probably creeping up to 800, honestly, at this point now. Um, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It covers all sorts of different ground. And uh, it's a dollar right now for full access. Um, but I keep warning people, all, all I have to do is literally just take five minutes and I could tweak the price. And I've been saying I was going to do it for a year. But I just, I like to try to keep it as accessible as possible for people. But 
at some point the dollar will be gone and it will go up to either three or five bucks i'm debating it but uh yeah the gravy train is gonna be ending <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you all later. I think Kelsey and I are going to do a Sunday video this week. So, um, yeah, be ready for that. Get ready to get ready. All right, talk to you later. Bye.